this morning I was listening to a lot of music and and I've got like seven different ways and lyrics that I want to like make as the center of the class. So I'm having to pick a couple and I think I'm going to end up with the barfy way. But just so you know, some close contenders were Tom Petty's I Won't Back Down. Right? There's a whole different ways this class could go, right? But here's one. I want to tell you a quick little story about my man Dave, okay? Because I was right before I got here. This is what made me go the way. But do you know that Dave Matthews has, I think he has three kids, but he's got two, um, two he's got twin daughters. <clears throat> and here's a cool story about Dave Matthews that I know from a friend who knows Kate DiCamillo. Anyone know who Kate DiCamillo is? She's a great writer, especially of young adult and children's books. She wrote Win Dixie, which actually even turned into a movie, right? Um, so her, her book, which is a great kid's book, right? It's a great one. It's about a lost dog named Win Dixie, right? That's named after a grocery store chain. Um, <clears throat> Well, they're making it into a movie and Dave Matthews calls up. If I can't remember if I've told you this story or not. Dave Matthews calls up because he's got like five-year-old daughters, right? <clears throat> and he calls up and says, KD Camillo, this is Dave Matthews. And could I please, please, please be in your movie? Could I please, please, please be the guy that runs the pet store that turns out to be really cool because no matter what I do, my daughters don't quite think I'm cool. And I so want to be cool to my daughters. But if I could ever be in Win dixie the movie, that they would think I was cool for a lifetime. <clears throat> so Kate DiCamillo lets him in the movie. And if you watch that movie, he even creates a song right in the film about it. So it's like, it's great. He's He plays this kind of spooky character that no one knows if he's good or bad, but he's got a great heart. So <clears throat> this name, that lyrical name, that tune, um, I've already told you, it's Dave Matthews. It's from a song called Samurai Cop. Let's not forget, and by the way, this song, I'm pretty sure he's writing to his, I think when he wrote this song, his daughters are like teenagers. <clears throat> and it's to, uh, I think it's to their development right? It's a beautiful song, right? It starts with their birth and he gives little like messages to them throughout their lifetime. But one of them is, let's not forget these early days. Remember, we begin the same. We lose our way in fear and pain. Oh, joy begin. Because he's talking about the pain of the birth, watching his mom the, her, their mom have to, you know, work so hard and scream with pain to push them out. All right. <clears throat> so that has nothing to do with, it does have something to do. Now, period on that, that background. But the idea that, let's remember the early days, right? Even of our own, you know, hopefully most of us anyway had okay childhoods, right? The conference I was just at, a lot of early development um, trauma and holy wow, um, that's hard, right? <clears throat> um, but that's a whole other story. So, <clears throat> so fast forward, I'm a senior in college and I'm getting into this philosophy thing and um, I sign up, I get special permission to go into a graduate level seminar, 8,000 level class, right? Um, graduate seminar on Schopenhauer. Now, uh, that guy's one of the most negative, pessimistic guys, but he's one of the guys that truly influenced Nietzsche to say some really bizarre things. Schopenhauer is one of those philosophers that was something, 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 but, but put him quickly in context. He, Schopenhauer is writing right after Kant and Kant comes up with these 12 categories that are necessary for us to have a mind at all, um, whatever, you know, um, 
I'm sure there's no coincidence that there are 12 categories and there are 12 disciples and 12 is one of those numbers, you know, of course, you know, like, of course, there'd be, the universe would make things in perfect order. Of course, there'd be 12. He sounds very German, doesn't he? Um, but Schopenhauer comes and goes, ah, the 12 categories don't matter as much as the only one of the 12 categories, which is causality, right? <clears throat> and one of the things about Schopenhauer, one of the things that Kant says is that because we have these 12 categories that are forced into our heads to have a mind at all, right? Um, we'll never know things in themselves, meaning that we'll never have direct access to reality. They'll always have to go through these 12 categories, right? 12 ways of thinking about the world, basically. And so we'll never have knowledge of the, he calls the noumenal world, right? The noumenal world and things in themselves. And what Kant is actually trying to do is try to get a foundation for science, given that we have a relative position within the universe, right? What he, that's what he's really trying to do. But I don't, don't, don't let me digress here. I, I could get even more boring here, right? So... <clears throat> So, but the one Schopenhauer comes in and says, ah, there's one place we have knowledge of the noumenal world, right? And that's in our own bodies. We have double knowledge of our bodies. So if you think about it, here's my water bottle. I can know this as an object, right? But I can never know the inside of the water bottle. I can never, or the squirrel that's running out in my in my woods. I can never have knowledge of the inside of any object. I can know my body as an object, right? There's my arm, right? But what Schopenhauer tries to come back and argue is that we have double knowledge of the body. We actually have it knowledge of it as an object, right? And knowledge of it from the inside. Right, I'm moving my finger, so I can feel what that feels like, and it's an object that I'm observing. So now, that idea lit my world. Okay, so let's not, you know, we start innocent, right? Let's not forget our beginning, going back to, to whatever. So that started, I didn't realize the extent to which and I got really fascinated by double knowledge of the body. And basically, when I look back at it, I realized that that's probably why I started studying yoga eventually. It'd take a few years. But I start to go, huh, because I started to think about what kind of inner knowledge do I have of my paralyzed body or a part of my body that I can't feel, right? So, <clears throat> so careful what's still, you know. I hope you start to know your own stories and how you get to places that you don't even recognize, right? So how is it that we did lose the wonder of our early days, right? Going back to Dave Matthews again, like what? When did the world get so heavy? So now the song I wanted to start with this morning, I woke up a little bit more without all these other songs in my head, was, now there, here's a lyrical name, that tune. Sun's up, looks okay, world survives into another day. I'm thinking about eternity some kind of ecstasy's got a hold on me. Anybody know this song? Come on. Come on, somebody's got it. Sun's up, looks up, world survives into another day. I know that song. What? I know that song. Do you know, can you name it? No. Oh, for God's sakes, come on, everybody. <laughs> Angelique, nor can I, and I know it. I, I, me you're too. Make I can me never feel. name songs. I know it too, but I don't know the name. Know the title. Oh, for God's sake! Eternity. Yeah, 
<laughs> but I'm wondering where the lions are. Wondering where the lions are. <laughs> That's the name of the song, Wondering Where the Lions Are. It's by Bruce Colburn. I, I love mean, that I as an opening it. line. Sun's up, looks okay, world survives into another day. It's starting to be spring here, right? But so he's talking about, you know, and somehow it makes him super happy, right? Some kind of attorney's got a hold on him. But then the song goes on, but where are the lions? I'm wondering where the lions are. I can't hold this very long. Like, what the hell? I'm wondering where the lions are. So if you don't know that song, you should know it. It's a great Bruce Colburn song, right? <clears throat> so all this to be said, right? If I think about the sensation, what if, do you think there's a sensation of eternity? I know our minds can't really think about it, right? Kind of like the word infinity. But as you know, and this is one of the fantastic criticisms that Native Americans have of white culture, more white culture, is they lack the sensation of eternity. This is from Louise Erdrich and actually the Night Watchmen, right? That, 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 we lack a sensation of eternity. So one of the ways that the Native American cultures try to connect to the sensation of eternity is through the earth because it's the oldest body we'll ever know. Right, and all this got going because I read an article in the paper this morning about what they think is the oldest tree in Minnesota is dying because of climate change. It's a cedar tree up in the Boundary Waters canoe area. And it's, I think it's over 1400 years old and it's beginning to go away because the weather is changing. So I was trying to, I was feeling kind of heavy about that. Oh, turn it on hard. What? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, but then, but then I started to, then I heard the song, you know, and thinking about eternity and thinking about the gatekeepers of more time, like trees and stuff. And, all this stuff. But when I think about eternity, when my mind just thinks about eternity, it gets kind of heavy. Or have you ever thought about the distances in the universe, how far away we are from any other thing else, <laughs> right? Like, in fact, the great distances of outer space can actually be overwhelming for the mind. There have been a lot of studies on what that would do to astronauts and stuff, right? To be that far away from things, that far away from Earth. So I'm moving back and forth now. Can you tell? Because the sensation of eternity, if my mind actually just stays with it, it my mouth gets dry and I feel kind of deadened, right? So it's like, huh. But what if there's a sensation of eternity? If I, if I, if I go too far with it, with my mind, right? The great thing about the earth is if you go like by the old tree or the stream that keeps going, or the lake that I you look down at as you come into Minnesota, you know you're home when the lake, when you see all the lakes coming. Minnesota's got a lot of lakes, if you don't know that. And you come in and you see these lakes underneath you, and you think, and they've been smiling. Those lakes have been hanging there for a long time. And then these human beings start growing up around them, but the lakes just kind of keep hanging out, right? They've been here a long time. So I'm sitting there feeling all this stuff and thinking if I drop my chest and get really small and then I think about eternity, I get, I feel little like the abyss, you know, you talk about the abyss. We have all these words for stuff, right? If I mentally think about the abyss, I lose sunlight. Does anyone else feel that way? Right. If I sit there and I think about it, it's like emptiness and like outer space and never ending void and my mind goes blah 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 and I go tumbling down the I'm Sisyphus rock tumbling down the hill blah 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 right thinking about oh god it's big but then if I think wait what if my body and my I sense the sensation of eternity and the best way to start to not feel it is not directly with my mind Right. If I start to know the one thing that's different, I mean, human beings have developed concepts 
and maybe truths about a creator or an ever non-changing, ever present benevolent being that allows you to start feeling the sensation of eternity as ecstasy, right? Right. But what if my nervous system can also feel it? So sit up straight and tall. So that was a weird quilt, right? I went just through a lot of things with a lot of illusions to the very idea that if my mind tries to access the sensation of eternity, it's very dry and it makes me very little. If I assume that my body senses the sensation of eternity, which by the way, would have to be here, right? Or at least there's a lot more time like that tree in Minnesota or that 5,600 year tree in the Chilean highlands. You know, that's the oldest tree on earth. It's 5,600 years, yeah, on earth, right? But that sensation is here within the existential metaphysic. There's a timeless sensation here. And when my mind tries to get it, I lose too much water. When I sit up straight and tall, when I allow that I'm not a drop in the ocean, but I'm the entire ocean in a drop that all the sensations are here. And the Native American criticism of our capitalist culture is we don't have a sense of time, expansive time. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop my chest and go, boy, the world seems a little heavier. I'm gonna lift my chest. And the time, the eternity sensation has been here the whole time. It's how I receive it. Do I allow that there's an open-ended wonder that I probably felt more when I was a child that's happening here now and I've lost it in fear and pain, getting back to Dave Matthews. Right. And now when I lift my chest, my body hurts a lot. I don't know about yours. And yet the sensation of eternity is still here. So it turns out I have to quiet down now because my mind's going to get in the way. I.e. potentially, right? So I'm going to soft, put my lips together, tea slightly apart. I'm going to start to get quiet down. But I, but I want to get the ecstasy of the quiet, not just the mental heaviness when I try to put it in context. All the time is in me too. Inside of the mouse gets sopped. Turns out, I think... My experience is that I can feel eternity better when I connect my inner ears. Because I can hear the timeless silence better. So in order to connect the inner ears, soften the base of your tongue. Now... I'm going to make sure the empty space that's timeless, I'm going to lift it into the world as opposed to let my mind hear the concept. As I lift it in the world, I'm going to connect more to my sit bones and my feet. I'm going to know that this sensation of eternity goes beyond me. So I'm going to allow that it goes down through the, my chair into the ground. And I'm going to allow that there's an alignment between that and the space above me. And I'm going to plug into the aligned threads of the in empty space and the eternity. I'm going to broaden between my shoulder blades, broaden across my collarbones, drop my shoulder blades down a little bit, spread them. 
find my sitting bones, find my inner heels, feel the encasing of my body, re-soften my jaw, the inside of my mouth, reconnect my ears, feel my skin, and be grateful. Now, if you can, and it doesn't disturb too much, bring your hands into prayer. I'm not gonna today. I'm gonna keep my forearms against my thighs. That's what I'm doing today. I'm gonna find the midline a different way. But those of you that have your hands in front of you, I can also, by the way, we have more than one set of arms. So I'm having one set of arms on my thighs, one set of arms in prayer. I'm connecting the subtle sensations of both. I'm keeping my chest lifted and feeling a line right down the center of my nose going right through my body, but I'm going to lift that energy up through my chest, down to the earth. I'm going to be in time, not worry about the rest of the week, not worry about the weekend. And I'm going to prepare my mind to do yoga. All these words. Good. And then release. Trying to peel the grape and the inside of the grape is so simple. It's whether I can let it be ecstasy. Two. Sternum up towards your chin, chin down over your sternum. It's not just an abyss. As it goes through me, it's a living abyss. Drop the chin in humility. Raise your head up with closed eyes. Open your eyes. That's a living thing. What the hell? I'm going to take my legs apart because I can tell that I need the base of my spine and my groins to open up a little bit. So we're following the sensations that I want to touch because they feel good. Right. In this conference I was at, there was the egghead, but deepening an appreciation of the importance of rhythm. I say eggheads because they needed like studies to prove it to them, right? And so they're I'm leaning over, making sure my spine, so I'm leaning over and Pressing down through my on my forearm to my thigh, make sure I have the earth, I'm finding my sitting bones, and I'm lifting my chest. But I'm doing it in a way that's trying to be a sensual appreciation of eternity rather than a drawing sensation of the abyss. Right? I'm going over the other way. And then back the first way. But I'm knowing that I'm trying to open up and deepen the sensations near the base of my spine. Because other people have thought 
to describe that as the life chakra. Right? So, what the hell? I can kind of get why they'd say that. I'm bringing my legs in so I can show you. I can kind of get why they'd say that. Right? Because that is where we make babies and stuff and all this other stuff. Right? <clears throat> so, um, even if you can't spread your legs very much, right? At least change their position. So there's a different feel on your sitting bone. So again, I'm going down to the earth by leaning here, changing using gravity down. I'm lifting my spine up. So I want to just pay attention to those two. I'm not doing anything with this hand yet. Right? I'm going down and up. And with that little bit of change in sensation, I'm trying to figure out how my head should be. Right? How my head should be. And now I'm using rhythm by going in and out of it. So my mind gets to contrast the sensations. So now I'm going to add another variable. So I'm going to lean over, go down towards the earth, spring this way, make sure my head knows how to be aligned. And I'm going to make sure the backside stays going towards the earth. Right? Because this is what yoga poses do. Right? Down, up, my head aligns. And then down again through the back arm. Holy cow. Now I've got this up, down, up, down. And now I'm going to allow my core channel. You can kind of know as you that know the bandhas can say, oh, that can kind of see how Mula Bandha could happen here. But wait, I want it to be Uriyata Bandha. So, so I want it to be deeper than that. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on here. Good, and then come on back to center and go, what? And I say, yes. You say, what? I say, yes. Actually, I say, what? So now, and I say, yes. I say, what and yes. Now I'm changing gravity. I'm going down. I'm lifting my spine. I'm making sure my head continues to be this. I'm pushing. Now I'm adding more earth to add more rise. Right? Making sure my inner ears are connected. I want to hear the full stream. Taking a breath. Holy cow. And I just thought I was sitting alone. I'm gonna come forward again. Back and forth using some rhythm here. Did anyone watch Kung Fu? With David Carradine. Some of you are way too young for this, but yeah. Whereas, you know, he would wander around doing good at good acts. It's just a horrible show and it's wonderful and affected me as a little kid. But there is this one where he's sitting alone by a stream and remembering some teachings from when he was a kid. And basically, when he thought he was alone, he was like, well, what about the sound of the birds and this and then that? And you're never actually alone. That's a good thing to make sure it doesn't turn into the abyss. All right, so I'm coming back and forth. And then... Bring my legs back together. Bring my knees a little closer together. So this core channel lights up through the alignment. 
but it's not just that your femur bones and your legs get more straight up from the hip. As soon as you get that feeling, right, what you're looking for is the space between that you can't sense as well, but that's part of the part of the eternity, right? And you, you're traveling that up your spine. So it's not just the sensation that I can feel, which is the change in position of my legs. That's trying to help you feel with a better container, the pull that goes to the chest lift. So, so there's an instruction in every forward bend, right? Where, um, well, I should keep the camera the same, right? So, if I, my legs are straight out in front of me. I remember when I really started to get this instruction that it would say, pick a point on the inner side of each inner thigh and draw from that point, draw back and then lift the chest and come forward. Right? <clears throat> so, that act, that little instruction changed my universe, right? Where all of a sudden I realized something, and it's interesting. It's not like trying to give me a physical instruction. It's picking a point, right? So when I when my knees, my paralyzed legs don't, they don't have the ability to stay more aligned. So I have to push them here. So I'm contain. I'm making a better container for this energy, right? which allows me to find a little bit better right between the thighs to go back towards the navel, right? So practice that a little bit. Whether you can get your keep your knees yourself more in line, I want you to use your hands to bring your knees slightly closer together. And I want you to see that as they come together, there's an opportunity to draw back, right? And then rise from the drawing back and then release. So now contrast that because my I always have to prove things to my mind, right? If I don't do that and my knees are apart, it's much harder for me to draw back, right? To find the space. I can do it, but I pretty much have to mem remember the space I was just in, right? So you can see how this draw when your leg, when your femur bones are in a triangle with your forming a triangle more with your tailbone, it's harder to find how to draw the energy back. I can draw it up, but I can't draw it back as well, right? So I'm going to go back to this one and go, oh golly. I'm happy I get to sit like this sometimes. I'm gonna push in to get reference even more and I'm gonna draw back, lift up and then come forward. Right, so I'll do it again. Finding the midline, picking a point between each inner thigh, drawing back, lifting up, coming forward. So as you come forward and go down, allow that your eyes are looking down. So you're going towards the earth with your frontal cortex too, right? And try it again, right? Back, down, up, forward. I'm gonna stay here. My hands are on my, the, my foot pedals, but however you can stay grounded here. I'm gonna stay here for a while. I'm going to go inward and then I'm going to let the full on that I'm surrounded in abyss and eternity, right? I'm going to go and I'm going to transform myself by lifting my chest. I'm going to change the direction of everything by lifting my chest, right? And then release. So that's great about this is that of course, if you think about the everything, right? 
the everything already had both the forward bend in it and the, so the forward bend and it already had this energy, which we really practiced. And then I tried to transform it by lifting my chest. But of course, the potential of the lifted chest was already in the eternity, right? Right. And so it's not like I'm making it happen. And I can tell myself because I'm egocentric, right, as a human being, that the world's coming with me. Right. Which helps me think it's real. Don't, don't get me wrong. It helps me to say the world's coming with me, right? But the truth is I'm coming into something that already was, right? I'm coming into something that already was. But what I receive from the universe changes because my mind gets to be more aware of all of it. So we're going to do it again. So when we go to lift our chest, remember... Let's not forget these early days where you thought everything was possible. I mean, I used to go to bed thinking and dreaming about how I could throw a baseball around the world. So I love that part of me. I'm going to do it now. So when I come forward and do all this extra thing to find the earth and to come forward, I'm going to allow that when I lift my chest, I'm changing or the universe is changing me. So I'm going to go through the whole, the whole thing again, right? Because why would you be in a rush if eternity is actually everywhere already? There's no point in being in a rush, right? There's a whole bunch of stuff here, for God's sakes. It's mine that tries to accelerate everything. All right, here we go. I'm going to go through the whole thing. And when I lift my chest, just know I'm cackling with eternity because I'm happy that I get to experience another part of the universe. Because... I'm going to remember when I thought I could throw a baseball around the world. But there should be no reason why I couldn't do that. Right? Okay, so I'm going to come. Remember, so now we're starting here. Bring my fingers up. And is anyone getting better? See, this is where I'm starting to have the fun start happening. When you bring your legs together, you start to feel the shot right away of it coming up through you. Have you, like, connected the dots yet? Right? Yeah. Shit. Think how often I don't notice that when I bring my legs together. Right away, boom, something's happening. But a brain can't let everything pass through my mind or my mind wouldn't even know how to think anymore. Right? All right, so I'm bringing my knees together. Picking a point between my inner thighs. I'm drawing it back. I'm drawing it back. I'm lifting my spine up. I'm coming forward. I'm letting my eyes follow down. I'm getting grounded now because when I change the universe here or become the upward part of the universe as I've connected to the down, I'm going to let joy begin here. Lift up my chest, change everything, but don't lose where you were. Don't lose where you were. Keep drawing back from the inner thighs back, back. Lift the chest, but now, and you're coming forward, but now you're looking up. Oh my God, can't you see why you'd want to drop your shoulder blades and spread them? The poses write themselves. For God's sakes, you don't need a teacher. You need to listen. Good, and then release. Except I'm glad you show up anyway. I am glad for that. Right? Now I'm going to... Take my legs apart again, change gravity. That's a very earthy thing that just happened. I don't want to just be sad about that tree that we're killing by driving too many cars, right? Up in Minnesota, which the guy that had to get there had to take sled dogs to get to. It's in the it's Star Tribune right now, right? There's a picture of him putting his hands on it, right? He's a 69-year-old guy, right? And he puts his hands on it. But really, the tree is just a reminder of eternity, right? So now I'm going over all the things we did before, right? Keeping the earth, keeping the rise, making my head go in line with me. Pressing down through the back, other leg, get more earth. 
going to try to keep all that, which as soon as I lose all this great earth, I'm going to try to pretend I'm doing more yoga, take the arm up, but I'm trying to have the down, the down, the rise, the open, the space between my shoulder blades, right? And my mind's going to think, well, that's a lot of things to be aware of. I'm going to go back to the, the drying part of the abyss, but actually I'm not going to. I'm going to remember the other part of the abyss, the, the joyful part of eternity. And I'm going to let the pose write me because I'm going to listen. Good. And then release. Got to let the pose write you. W-R-I-T-E. And I guess R-I. R-I-T-E. The universe will write you. Both, both, both spellings. How could there be two different spellings and two different meanings for the same sound? W-R-I-T-E and R-I-G-H-T. What the hell with the silent letters? What kind of effed up thing is that? There's freaking silent letters, like the silent part of your inhale and exhale. What the hell? There's silent sounds here that make up meaning? Oh my God, this is a new thought for me, by the way. Right? There's silent sounds in letters that make up meaning. Someone's got to write that. Beth, you got to write that down for me. Got to remember that. Oh my God. All right. There seems to be a big difference between a W and an R, right? W R I T E and an R I T E, right, right. One's got a silent W. I'm freaking out by this right now. I'm having one of those moments, right? Okay. Right in the middle of a yoga pose. So I'm leaning over. I'm going down. I'm rising up. I'm going down. I'm writing my head. The pose is W-R-I-T in my head. And I'm R-I-G-H-T in my head with silent letters. Right? And I'm becoming, I'm keeping all this. I'm going to take a breath here because damn it, this feels good to go in so many directions. Then I'm going to add another one. I'm going to lose part of the earth here. Damn it. It's okay. Because I'm thinking about eternity. And some kind of ecstasy has got a hold on me. Even if I'm imperfect. What? I can take my shoulder blade back towards my spine and extend out through my upper arm to find my legs better? How could that be possible? Well, I'm going to R-I-G-H-T myself and W-R-I-T-E myself, right? From, then back to center, from both the abyss and or the sense of eternity. How do you want that to be here? How do you want eternity to be here? In living form that goes through your body? or from dead form that goes through your mind. I think I'm picking the living part. I'll take living for 400, Jim. He says, or whatever his name, Alex from concentration. I'll take the living part, right? Instead of the deadening part. I'm gonna have to have a serious talk with Camus, right? Right? Or with those existentialists, right? I think they took dying for 300 on, on the game, on the game, whatever that game is, concentrate, whatever that game is. I'm doing dog pose now. They picked the dying for 300. I'm picking the living for 400. Right? Has anyone noticed that your life's kind of hard to got some stuff in it? Yeah. Jeopardy. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Thank you. Concentration. I was thinking the, the price is right. I couldn't think of it. But I'm lengthening my spine, dropping my shoulder blades, stretching out the top of my head, finding my sitting bones, finding my inner heels. All this in dog pose because I'm thinking about eternity. I'm going to breathe.
good and then release. Can't you tell it's time for a twist? For God's sakes, it's been time for a twist for a long time. I'm going to sit here for a second. I'm going to touch the whole class really quick, right? That's what you get to do when you practice, right? You can go, oh, 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 I'm going to feel the whole thing. All this just happened right there. Thinking about all this stuff. Actually, I'm going to add some rhythm here quick for a second, right? Because when my mind sees all these things, I make everything more static. When my body has it, if I'm paying attention, my body actually wants to move. Right, the mind, the body wants the rhythm. The mind wants to make things static, and in the middle, the twine shall meet. Right, I gotta find both. So I'm gonna inhale, take my arm up. Right, exhale, together behind me. So now I want the tube of toothpaste to square it out right through the center of my chest. But to do that, I gotta go down. But this time I want down to be a little gut and a little extra instruction. I want you to pick that point between each thigh. I want you to drop back towards your navel. I want you to hit down through the sitting bones, lift up through the chest, auger down, inhale, lift up, exhale, revolve. Holy cow. The backside between your shoulder blades is coming with you, the space is coming with you, and you're throwing things into space, right? And your head needs to catch the whole, W-H-O-L-E, not H-O-L-E. Your head needs to catch the W-H-O-L-E, and then come on back to center. You gotta know when I just made the realization between H-O-L-E and W-H-O-L-E, I just freaked out again. The difference between W and without W, between the R and the W and right, holy hell. A silent letter changes the whole meaning. What the hell's going on here? Who's in charge? A silent letter? What the hell is that? How could a silent letter change the, your sense of the universe? It does. Take the other hand here, find the grounding. A silent letter changes everything. Your inner silence changes everything. What the hell, Chuck? Inhale, lift up. You're augering down. You're picking the point between your inner thighs. You're drawing back. You're lifting up. You're exhaling. You're submitting back to the universe. And you're revolving because the universe gives back. <sighs> you're not going into the H-O-L-E. You're going into the W-H-L-E. But it sounds the same. My goodness gracious. Come back to center. What's going on here? It sounds the same, and the meaning's completely different. I'm coming forward under my elbows, right? So you could do this on your thighs, too, right? You could do this like here, right? <clears throat> but I'm, I'm wanting, my, wanting to be a little more forward, right? The thing is, is that, the thing is, they say this can be an intimidating thought about yoga poses, <sighs> is that once Humpty Dumpty's broken apart, it's hard to put them back together again. So I leaned forward, kind of threw it away, like kind of like a banana peel. Kind of threw the banana peel without thinking about the banana peel. Right? And as I peeled the banana, right? I'm going to come back up again, and I'm going to think as I come forward, put my elbows on, or my elbows on my thighs or on the table, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to not throw away the banana peel. I'm going to remember all this stuff. Because <laughs> I just threw it away. I just like came forward like it was no big deal. So now I'm going to put my knees together, pick the point of the inner thighs, come forward with a lifted chest. And I'm going to keep it with me as I come forward. 
Because when I keep it with me, can anyone tell that your back is more extended? What the hell? It's the W-H-O-L-E and not the H-O-L-E. But they sound the same. They look the same. Nobody's the wiser except you. You're the wiser. So now I'm keeping my hands like this. You know why? Because I'm going to do a little secret with the universe. I'm going to touch a little bit of the magic of eternity. And I'm going to let the space between my hands and my palms be part of my pose, which means I'm looking at Amanda's um, left wrist being cockeyed. So she's blocking some of the her the one with the yeah, you see how you got it overly done. You're you're using too much will there, woman. Right? Yeah, you got to get that open. Because if your wrists are over cock or you're trying to use too much of your will, you're going to miss the magic of the space between your hands. So once I get it equal, the eternity equal between my wrists, it actually changes my sitting bones. It changes where the space is between my knees. It changes the space between my feet because the W-O-L-E is better than the H-O-L-E. And I'm going to lift my chest, even though they sound the same. So if your name is Ellie, you better get your elbow tips to be talking to each other so you can find your sitting bones. Yeah, right? I'm watching all of you all, right? Oh, I see. I could go through every screen and make an improvement on everyone's pose, by the way. I'm seeing some problems here. Okay, we got to start over. I'm seeing problems. For God's sakes, I'm seeing problems on the screen. <sighs> okay. There is going to be a class where I go through everybody's screen and I point things out, but it's only going to happen in the eternity part of the class, right? In the part that doesn't happen, right? Because, so just assume that there are places in your body that are not receiving, right, eternity. That there is something that's slightly overly gripped and out of balance. So here's the thing about yoga is that lots of this has to be yours to discover. Oh, oh I forgot you. I just did it again. I just screwed up the whole thing. I'm going back, getting my knees together, getting the forward bend part, lifting my chest, changing the world, coming forward into the H-O-L, W-H-O-L-E, right? Coming forward, going to try to do, even if you, if you can keep your palms apart, if you can't, there's still space here. I'm trying to make sure that this space informs the feeling between my breastbones where my sacrum, where my, where my, across my sacrum, my inner heels, the space between my knees and my legs. Oh my God. As soon as I do that, does anyone feel all the space in the room? I totally feel all the space in the room. Like what the hell, Chuck, right? And I'm coming forward here and I'm keeping my chest lifted. I'm going to find the placement for my head that feels the most congruent, right? And that's for you to figure out. And I'm going to, oh, my rib cage is turned. So I'm learning stuff here. I'm having to adjust my own rib cage. Right? So I'm letting the empty spaces that could either be the abyss or the joyful part of eternity. Right? Rewrite my pose. And I'm going to breathe. Good, and then release. Now I'm going to come forward from the forward bend. We're going to do the. We're going to go for an extra hour here. Don't worry about it. You, you got time. Remember, it's eternity here. Right? You may have appointments, but screw it. I'm going to come forward. I'm going to do all this stuff. I'm going to quickly do all this stuff from the class. And then I'm going to go over Mm -hmm. 
So I'm going to be forward. Make sure the lift in my chest changes the whole universe or I change with the whole universe or I realize the part of the stream I didn't perform. And now I'm going to inhale, lift up, I'm going to exhale, revolve. And every time I twist, don't forget to keep drawing back from the inner thighs, back to the tailbone. Turn the twist of your chest, keep the shoulder blades in the body and make this twist be more powerful in less ground, in less space. Good, and then release. Whew, that one was a deep twist on me. Right, because I made the the I made the work happen in less space, so I could get more of me moving around. So I'm going to come forward again. I'm going to draw in, go forward, right? Get down forward again. Lift my chest. Become part of the H O W H O L E. Right, not just fall into a hole. I'm going to elongate my spine, and I'm going to twist. I'm going to get this deeper twist. To make sure I get the joy of lifting my sternum, the double knowledge of the body, the abyss and becoming eternity, the eternity not being a person. Good, and then come on back to center. I seem to be losing people at the end, right? Damn it. Took him a bridge too far up over the back of my chair to prepare for Shavasana. Keep the space open. Then practice some symmetry. So not only have Shavasana happen in your head, more like air have it happen with the space right around your head. Don't just have it happen in your spine, but the empty spaces in each shoulder, the empty spaces in each ankle, in each hip. Without doing it, visit all the life we did and more in the asana. Take all of that and lean it against the back of your chair. Receive. Turns out the earth and the universe is perpetually giving we tend to perpetually take. It's not our fault exactly. We just get greedy. Take more than we need. Soften as I had that thought, my lips were tight. I remember that the earth keeps giving. Soften my jaw, the inside of my mouth. I hover in space while I sit in my chair.
Feel your breath. Don't change it, whatever that means. Gratitude. Easier to see it first on the inhale. Keep it through the exhale. The inhale expands your chest. The exhale, the dissipation of exhale extends and opens your chest. Thank your body. Thank you for what it shows you. When you're ready, open your eyes. Close them if you need to. Choose to open. So that's one of the things like we could just take the whole class and put it into one breast cycle, right? It's like the inhalation. You can feel the expansion. You can feel that it's grateful that it's here, right? But the exhalation doesn't have to be, the dissipation on exhalation doesn't have to drop everything, right? That it can actually bring you more into the world. I think that, I think I heard Jess Fleet say something like exhale into existence, right? In the class she taught in the huddle. The fact that there's an opportunity to, as you dissipate, to come into the world as we age, as opposed to just becoming like having the it turn into the abyss and be heavy, have our dissipation actually bring you into the world. That's how I'm going to go out. I'm going out by coming in. All right, everybody, we've gone on too far. People keep dropping off. Namaste. The spirit in me bows the spirit in you. And I hope you have a wonderful week. My plan is to be here next week. Don't forget, you went from Dave Matthews to Chopin.